Just like Neuralink, Facebook too is working on a brain-to-computer interface which aims at connecting our brain directly to a computer. Like for Neuralink, the original idea at Facebook came from scientists addressing human debilitating issues. And, like for Neuralink, the concept is based on recording the activity of a large number of neurons in our brain, and in a non-invasive way. But there are some significant differences between the device being developed by Facebook and Neuralink. Facebook is not planning to become a maker of medical devices, and the device does not rely on electrodes or implants of any kind, but it is wireless, courtesy of the photonics industry. Most importantly, the device Facebook is working on has a specific goal, and it was first presented at F8 2017, the annual gathering of Facebook developers. So, what if you could type directly from your brain? It sounds impossible, but it's closer than you may realize. And it's just the kind of fluid human-computer interface needed for AR. Even something as simple as a yes-no brain click would fundamentally change our capability. We have a goal of creating a system capable of typing 100 words per minute five times faster than you can type on your smartphone, straight from your brain. Over the past three decades, work in artificial speech recognition has produced powerful tools to decode text from brain activity while people are speaking. This is real data showing the remarkable result of mapping brain signals to text directly. Now, these systems don't currently operate in real time, and what's more, they require surgery, implanted electrodes. And that simply won't scale. <laughs> so we'll need new non-invasive sensors, sensors that can measure brain activity hundreds of times per second and precise to millimeters. And without signal distortions, even as they read through hair and skin and skull. Now, no such technology exists today. We'll need to develop one. And we think optical imaging is the best place to start. Optical imaging may be the only non-invasive technique capable of providing the spatial and temporal resolution we need, and thanks to technological improvements in performance, cost, and miniaturization driven by the telecommunications industry, we have a very big wave to ride. Now, Mark Chevalet is the lead for this effort. He's a physicist neuroscientist, and he had the idea that this might be possible. Today, we've assembled a team of more than 60 scientists, engineers, and system integrators. They specialize in machine learning methods for decoding speech and language, in optical neuroimaging systems that push the limits of spatial resolution, in the most advanced neural prosthetics in the world. And we're just getting started. Two years after the first presentation, Mark Chevalet spoke at a scientific event where he gave some updates about the project. The main reason to go more public, said Chevrolet, is that, quote, we want it to be part of that public narrative. We know that we can't answer all of the ethical questions that are going to come up about the use of these technologies, both good and bad, and so we can't have that conversation if you don't know what's possible. The goal of the project has not changed, and actually the presentation given in 2017 is still up to date and richer in details. This, however, is the current concept presented by Facebook as scientific events, and it can also be seen on the block of Reality Lab, the research center focusing on AI, VR, and brain-to-computer interface at Facebook. So how do we get optical techniques in the sweet spot of performance, sampling hundreds of times per second and precise to millimeters? We start by filtering for quasi-ballistic photons. Now, if you've ever pressed a red laser pointer to your finger, you know that your whole finger glows red. The reason you don't see the original resolution of the laser pointer is that most of the photons scatter many times as they pass through, flying off in all directions. 
the photons are diffuse. And diffuse photons won't give us millimeter resolution. Now, due to chance, some don't scatter at all. These are ballistic photons. If we filtered only for these, we would retain the original resolution of the laser pointer. It's just that there are too few of them to see. Ballistic photons won't give us enough signal. Quasi-ballistic photons are somewhere in between. They scatter, just not too many times. And if we get the trade-off just right, we can get the spatial resolution we need and have enough photons to measure. Okay, so the next problem to solve is speed. Optical techniques are fast, which is good because speech is encoded in the high frequency oscillations of neural activity. That means we'll need to sample hundreds of times per second to decode them. But today's optical imaging systems, they don't measure neural activity. They measure blood oxygenation, which is a time integrated sum of neural activity. It is robust, but it is too slow to capture speech. Instead, we will need to measure the neural activity directly by capturing instantaneous changes in the optical properties of neurons as they suck in sodium and spit out potassium. In a few years' time, we expect to demonstrate a real-time silent speech system capable of delivering 100 words per minute. The main focus at the moment is to improve the quality of the information, which in this case means improving the signal-to-noise quality, which is also the biggest challenge. But Facebook is optimistic about the future. There is an increasing number of research projects on this topic, and even FB is supporting and waiting for the result of a test in which a participant has elected to have these electrodes implanted long term. This individual has both communication and movement limitations, and in this study researchers from the University of California, San Francisco, are exploring whether or not it will be possible to decode speech in real time a little more continuously, and see if that participant can actually get some communication of value out of the interface. These are no new challenges for the head of the brain project at Facebook. Before Facebook, in fact, Mark Chevillier was at DARPA where he worked on a project called Revolutionizing Prosthetics. The project is focused on replacing the limb of amputee soldiers with prosthetics that could be controlled by the brain, as though it was the natural limb. You can watch the detail of this program on this channel at the link above. A first prototypical system capable of measuring speech-related neural activity non-invasively on our way to a system that scales. That would be crazy amazing.